What's poppin' everyone and welcome back to the channel, Zach Lesage here. Today we're going to be covering over the top 10 best decks heading into the North American International Championships. This past weekend we've seen the Japanese National Championships and while those are still concluding at the time of I'm creating this video, because I'm leaving for NAIC on Sunday morning before the tournament, it's one of those things where I want to cover the top 10 best decks that are currently available based on all the information we know. Stay tuned for more information trends when it comes to the format, but right now this is a pretty solid list heading into the event. That being said, let's check it out. Kicking things off at number 10 is going to be Charizard EX. Now Charizard EX is an unfortunate tale of a deck that was previously the best deck in format, and it's kind of getting hated out of the format a little bit by a lot of current top decks up there. Uh, it doesn't have the best matchup spread right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't beat any decks in our current top 10 or the other decks that are available because there's about 25 or so viable decks in this metagame. Charizard did gain some new stuff from Twilight Masquerade, such as Kirin, um, to increase your damage input even more. So it's one of those things where Charizard can do a little bit more damage than it previously could before. However, it does have to adapt to Dragapult being a tough matchup, Raging Bolt being a tough matchup, alongside a handful of other aggressive decks. Will Charizard make the comeback that it had before? I don't know, we'll have to find out. All the lists available for these decks are going to be available in the pinned comments. Uh, stay tuned for the pinned comment. It's going to happen either when the video goes up or within a couple days. Or you can just screenshot these lists. If there's any cards that you need, be all, by all means, head over to Kayfabe Cards or PTCGL Store to pick up these brand new cards for the sets. Running all the way to number 9, and for the first time on this top 10 best list, is going to be Dragable Law Zone Box. The deck has been pulling up to online tournaments because it has a slightly different matchup spread than other Dragapult variants. Is this one going to end up being one of the better Dragapult builds? Likely. Um, it's unique enough where it's not like the Zatu vs Pidgeot debate, and there are some players that like Law Zone Box. We saw this very similarly with Law Zone Charizard EX back in our Obsidian Flames kind of metagame. Will we see this deck see a lot of success in NAIC? It really depends on which decks we're looking to face towards. But if there's a lot of loss on box, I feel like this deck typically does pretty well against that matchup. Um, build is pretty skeleton build, uh, so certainly some opportunities to kind of uh, change things up there if you like. But it's a super awesome deck if you're into spreading some damage counters and having some decent options with recon uh, on the Dra Dracloak. I hope that you uh, like this deck. So if you like this deck, uh, by all means, give this video a like share, subscribe, and let us know what your top 10 best decks in the format are, your predictions in the comments below. Flying high at number 8, and another new addition to our top 10 best decks is going to be Pidgeot EX Control. Now, I'm not going to lie, I just took All Out Blitzel's current list from, I believe, May 30th, um, and really, we're just going to run with that. There's a lot of interesting cards here, um, so if you haven't necessarily played against a control deck, what I'd recommend, or if you don't know how the Pidgeot control deck works, look at the, lo the Los Angeles stream where Lucas Zing won with a Pidgeot-based control deck. Uh, control decks were all the rage at that event, kind of took a step back, and now Twilight Masquerade's again, they got a couple new tricks such as Blood Moon, Ursa Luna, um, and I'm sure there's a handful of other cards. The way that the metagame changes is what really these options you could add into this deck. Is this going to be more played than Snorlax at any IC? Honestly, this deck might not be played as much as other decks. However, there are becoming a firm group of believers in Pidgeot control decks that might just take something like this to any IC. And with all of Blitzel really leading uh, the pact with the control vibes, I totally recommend checking this one out. Bringing the heat at number seven is going to be Lost Tina. Now, this list is not really changing too much in between. However, as the metagame shaping up, Lost Tina seems like it's moderately positioned in this metagame, and it is a favorite deck for a lot of players. Blood Moon Ursaluna EX is taking a lot of, uh, it's just a really good card, honestly, in any deck that's able to properly slot it in, which is pretty much everything, but some decks do it a little bit better than others, such as Lost Zone Box, or decks that have any way to accelerate energies to use it earlier. Um, it, it really gives this deck a lot of function, and having that mid-range attack where you don't have to necessarily have to Lost Zone your energies. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of other possible ways to be playing Lost Zone Box decks, such as just a regular Lost Zone Box deck. Tina does have its own advantages, especially when it comes to having a solid control matchup in this current metagame, which might end up being the play at an event as large as North American Internationals. We'll have to see how it plays out, but right now we got Lost Tina at number 7. Blocking all of the damage at number 6 is going to be Blissey. 
Uh, I believe Blissey is another new inclusion to our top 10 list. And as we see more Dragapults and Lost Zone Box and decks that don't really OHKO Blissey entering into the top 10, Blissey itself is going to enter into the top 10 because it can move all the damage around with Monkey Dory's ability. Um, basically, you take damage against Blissey, and you move that damage to your opponent's Pokemon, and you can decide how you want to draw your prize cards. You can Charon's Care and really continuously loop something like this. Whether you run into a bunch of Raging Bolts and face auto losses all day, or you run into a bunch of Dragapults and other decks that don't necessarily hit for 300 plus damage, that's really going to be up to you. But Blissey is actually one of the most interesting decks in this format, just because how well positioned it can be. Avoid those aggressive decks, beat those kind of uh, strategic decks, and you got one of the best decks in your hands right here at number six. In the middle of our list, we have Lost Zone Box. And Lost Zone Box is another deck that hasn't really changed too, too much, but we have added in Blood Moon Ursuluna EX and given ourselves more of an idea that we're going with a lightning type approach with both Iron Hands EX and Raikou V, likely due to the amount of Lugia that we're seeing in this format and how that's quickly become one of the better decks in formats. Uh, really, this deck is going to look like most Lost Zone Box decks from previous formats, not really adding anything else uh, that we haven't previously had. But Blood Moon Ursa Luna does give us that kind of mid-range approach to knock out things such as Maridon, whereas before we were forced to run in Hoopa EX um, and Roaring Moon EX to kind of take things down. With Charizard EX not necessarily being as played as possible, we don't need Roaring Moon or Grass Counters. So as the metagame's kind of shifted, this deck's kind of shifted to adapt to that as well. As Lost Zone Box has a lot of opportunities to adapt to any metagame, I think it's probably going to remain in the middle of this list, if not slightly a little bit higher. Um, as we go forward, but solid play for any IC. At number four, we have Dragapult Pidgeot EX, and this build's kind of proven itself better than the Zatu build. Now, I'm sure we might see some players play Zatu, and there's certainly an opportunity to be adding in something like a 1-1 Zatu or a 1-1 Bibarel, but right now, I really like how this deck is built for this particular metagame. Um, we have enough answers where we can kind of attack into our opponent's Pokemon. We got some de-evolution. We have ways to search things. We have single prize card attackers. Just enough text to really make this deck work and stand out against the rest of the metagame. I like, uh, I like how we're able to just like choose if we want to knock something out or move damage counters around. Um, and you have opportunities to add in something like Radiant Alakazam or Halucha. Like, I think a deck like this is endless. So while we can't currently move damage counters around with this list, we have ways like Professor Turo's to heal our Pokemon, and we could really change the way that we play this deck no matter what. That's what something like Pidgeot, as you see in the Charizard deck, the Pidgeot control deck, and now this deck, there's really a lot of opportunities to play this deck to your own content. So I'll ask you, while your list is probably going to look a few cards off different than mine, and maybe a little bit more than that, what cards are you including in your Dragapult list? You think it's the best way to play Dragapult? We'll have to see because we still have three more spots left. But let's open up that conversation. Is Dragapult better than number four? Is Dragapult's Pidgeot the best build? You let me know in the comments below. Moving from number one to number three is Raging Bolt EX. Now, Raging Bolt EX is really kind of uh, taken off in the metagame, one of the most played decks. However, as it's been more aggressive um, and players have kind of started to counter it over the past week, um, seeing a little bit more guard whore and stuff in our meta game. Raging Bolt has taken a couple steps back, which might actually be better for it into any IC if it's a deck that you're planning on playing. Um, this is my updated build with a little bit more of an aggressive approach at the meta game. Um, really giving yourself some opportunities to rip into your opponent a few times, draw in some of those cards, uh, and uh, just kind of knock out whatever you want. Decks like this, there's very sequencing heavy. However, um, a lot of the times you're attaching energies and can blow up anything like a Lugia V on your first turn of the game. Do you think Raging Bolt is going to be the best deck heading into any IC? I mean, I think it's already one it could be one of the best decks. And I'm a little bit scared because anyone could be playing a loss or uh, a Raging Bolt deck and just absolutely knock me out of the competition. But we'll have to see how it ends up playing out. At number two, we have Lugia V Star. And Lugia V Star has proven itself to be one of the best decks in format due to the release of Legacy Energy in Twilight Masquerade. It gives us options to basically having Iron EX as an attacker, and we can always use Luminion V to um, kind of awkward turn it if we ever need to. I've added Jamming Tower into this deck because Raging Bolt Ogre Pond is one of the bigger decks in format, and us shutting off their uh their pokemon tools can really help you get past that brave charm needing less energies to knock it out with the chinchino or maybe you can knock out anything with a blood moon ursa luna ex 
On top of that, Gardevoir is one of the better decks in our format, so having Jamming Tower to get a freebie prize card on a Drifloon or a Screamtail or whatever else they have um, can certainly even the prize trade up a little bit. Lugia seems to be that mix between having options, being aggressive, uh, with the only issue is trying to find that consistent balance uh, to get there. Lugia is really the type of deck that I think could win any IC. It just, I don't know who's going to win any IC with Lugia. If they have a really good day and run hot, this is the best deck in format. But it's not the best deck in format right now. It's currently at number two. So put your best guesses for number one. You might already have guessed it, but let's see what we got going on at our top spot of the week heading into the North American International Championships. Boom, here you have it. Number one, Gardevoir EX. Now, Gardevoir EX has really gained a little bit from this set, and it's going to be unfair stamp. I mean, some lists could run Hyper Aroma as their A spec, but we also have Monkey Dory giving us opportunity to take damage counters that we've placed with Psychic Embrace and moving it to our opponent's Pokemon. That gives us a way to heal our Pokemon, and it allows us to offset things, so we could use something like Drifloon for a little bit more damage if we need to. Uh, this deck with Professor Turos gives you a lot of opportunities, to have a strong, strong, strong matchup spread. However, this deck is quite technical, making it arguably one of the hardest decks to play in our current formats. We've seen a lot of Shuffle Squad members see a lot of success with decks like this in the past. Shout out Josh Frank. It's one of those things. Are we going to see a TSS win at any IC? If you're not prepared for Gardevoir, uh, you might as well play Gardevoir. And if you're not playing it, you might as well prepare for it. Gardevoir looks to be the big deck to beat at any IC. Guess we'll have to find out how it does. With Gardevoir continuing to rise above the rest, we'll have to see if it's gonna be the most played deck at any IC. Typically, players like a little bit more aggressive decks, and those are typically the more played decks. Charizard, Chen Pao, Lugia, uh, Raging Bolt. But online events are saying differently, and I think the metagame is very well positioned for Gardevoir to make a deep run. If you enjoyed watching this video, hopefully it helps you on your way to any IC. Feel free to pick up some coaching from me one-on-one. -on -one. I have no more availability before any IC, but if you want to start your next season right, which starts July 1st, uh, by all means, hit me up for some individual coaching before then. Appreciate everyone for watching. Thank you so much. And if you see me at any IC, be sure to say hi. Peace out and have a great one. Want to support the Shuffle Squad? Be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up Pokemon TCG singles, sealed, and PTCG live codes. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content, watches what we have going on every single day, every single week, even from time to time, and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the Pokemon TCG community. So if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and even leave a comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. That being said, we'll catch you with our next video. Thanks again. Take it easy.